Never Surrender, written and read by Steve Parker. Dennis the Hero shut down the browser and closed his laptop with a satisfying click. That's it, he thought. That's the last piece of the puzzle. He slid his seat back carefully so as not to knock one of his many shelves of canned food, ammo, and medical supplies. Rose to his feet, squeezed past some plastic water barrels, and moved out into his main room, his sanctum, his workshop. A multitude of tools and magazines lay in haphazard piles, on the floor, on benches, and hung from the wall in a way which the owner would probably describe as, I know where everything is. Grimy windows covered in newspapers let in a diffuse light which illuminated national flags, propaganda posters, and the centerpiece of the room, which was a large spheroid shape covered in old sheets. Dennis donned ratty work gauntlets, slipped a heavy leather smock over his head, slid thick plastic goggles on his eyes, took a deep breath, and pulled the sheets off the bulk. Chrome. Plastic and steel were much in evidence as the sheet slid to the floor, revealing a homemade spaceship about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. It was painted red, white, and blue, and featured a large curved window in front, but what was mostly in evidence were guns. Lots and lots of guns, of every type imaginable. Huge automatic machine guns, precision hunting rifles, weird silver tubes which could possibly do anything. Grenade launchers, rocket launchers, even some pistols here and there. All deadly, all armed, and all pointed in the same direction, straight ahead. Dennis sighed and smiled as a little shiver of joy ran down his spine. This was his machine, his creation and he was more proud of it than anything else he had ever done. Everyone else might have given up, but Dennis never would, and this machine was the physical manifestation of his defiance. All the world's scientific community had convinced people like Dennis that their efforts were pointless against the overwhelming force of the alien armada encircling the planet, but Dennis paid no heed. All Earth's politicians had cajoled, ordered, and finally begged the various resistance groups to close down and stop operations over the last few years, and one by one, they had acquiesced. The word keepers, the proud girls, Ephanon, and others had all shut up shop in the face of the undeniable truth, but not Dennis. Dennis had doubled down. He'd rejected his friends and family who tried to talk him out of it, He'd ignored the lamestream media and anyone who told him things he didn't want to hear. He'd narrowed his world bit by bit until all that was left was hate. Hate and blame. Hate, blame, and guns. And now he was ready. He walked over to a particularly old poster on the wall. It was in a wooden frame and depicted a drowning sailor in the middle of a dark ocean, his accusing finger pointed at the viewer with the caption, Someone talked in huge letters. Dennis reached back and felt around for a hidden latch. A little snick indicated he had found it, and the poster swung aside, revealing a small metal door with a shining plastic panel in the middle. Dennis raised his goggles, lowered his head, and stared directly into the panel from which came a green scanning light which tracked down his face. The door clicked open. Dennis drew his goggles back down and pulled open the little door, revealing a dull black box with strange yellow markings on its lid. He breathed deeply, centered himself, and carefully took out the box. It was heavy, despite its size, and he kept one eye on his cluttered floor as he took it over to his creation in the middle of the room. Gently, he eased it onto a nearby bench, turned to his machine, and opened an intricately sealed hatch on the surface. He then opened the small black box, revealing a glowing red metal inside, which he carefully picked up with a nearby pair of sturdy tongs. He was so involved in this task that he didn't notice the stranger enter the room 
until he turned back towards the open hatch, strange metal held in slightly shaking hands. Be careful with that, said the stranger. Dennis jumped with shock and nearly dropped the delicate cargo. Swearing quietly to himself, he peered at the intruder. He was nearly two meters tall, with red skin and small vestigial fins along his skull. He was an Elorian, the race chosen to represent the alien armada on Earth. They were called diplomats, but Dennis knew they mostly operated as spies and assassins. Dennis vacillated between hiding what he was doing and safely completing his task. He chose the latter, figuring the presence of an Elorian meant the jig was already up. Are you here to execute me? he asked defiantly. The tall alien smirked. No, we're curious is all. You're the last one, you know. Dennis slid the glowing red metal into the opening in his machine, shut the hatch, and began solidly securing it closed. You don't say, he snorted. Everyone else came to their senses long ago. We bring many things your race lacks, and ask little in return other than for humanity to join the galactic community. Most humans have seen the benefit, although some pretended not to for a while in order to... Uh, what is the word? Uh, profit? Yes, profit from other humans' ignorance or fear or whatever. It's interesting, but not particularly dangerous. So we thought that since even they have acknowledged the truth, we'd come and see just exactly what you are doing. I'm fighting back, said Dennis hotly. I'm not going to give in. We know what you're really up to. I've seen the pictures of you draining human babies for food. I've seen the videos of your secret brain control programs. I've seen it all on WeTube and Rubble and I... He paused when he noticed the Elorian laughing. <laughs> oh, said the alien, struggling to control his reactions. That? Yes, we wondered who was following all of that. None of it is true, you know. Yeah, right, snorted Dennis, making a few final adjustments to his ship and opening a small hatch in preparation to step inside. Please, believe me, we have no reason to do any of those things. Food is everywhere. We don't need your babies. And as for brain control... <laughs> he laughed again. Humans are very good at doing that themselves. With the stories you tell each other to explain the simplest of things, honestly, it, it would be funny if it wasn't so very, very sad. I don't believe anything you're saying, said Dennis, shuffling sideways through the small access hatch and climbing into his ship. And I'm going to take you all down. With this, said the alien disbelievingly, gesturing towards the small craft. My faith and my guns will stop any kind of Illuminati oppression. You'll see! Please, said the alien, turning serious. You must stop. You have absolutely no chance at all. You are not only throwing your life away, you may bring harsh repercussions on the people around you. The people you care for. They deserve it, shouted Dennis. I told them the truth and they rejected me. It's their own fault. To hell with them! He slammed the door shut, and a low hum started as he powered up his ship. You don't know what you're doing! You don't know what you're facing! cried the alien, but Dennis refused to hear him. He jammed his thick thumb onto a large red button, and his ship shot up through the roof, thrusting steel and wood aside as if it were paper, and tore through the sky. He tried to start the mixtape he'd prepared with an assortment of patriotic battle music, but the G-forces were such that he could barely move. He tensed his body as hard as he could to resist it and watched the clouds fly past the viewport in front. Finally, he shot out of the atmosphere and the infinite dark beauty of space opened up before him. For the first time in his life, he was opened up to the naked truth, unadorned, and unfiltered through politics, propaganda, or profit. He could see the curved horizon of his home planet, and he knew that it was not flat. He could see the endless depths of space, the trillions of stars and billions of galaxies. 
and he knew that he was not the most important being in existence. He saw the enormity of the alien armada, and he knew that he was fucked. Oh, damn, he muttered, and opened fire anyway.